Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Racing from Talkative Entertainment, and today I'm going to teach you how to make an easy inventory system in Roblox in 2020. Here we go. By far, one of the most requested things I get asked to program is a basic inventory system like you see on your screen right now. Today, we're going to program just that using easy to understand program concepts and the open source data store 2 module by ConfKaren. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a brand new base plate and you're going to publish that to your Roblox profile. Once you've done that, go over to game settings, options, and turn on HTTP requests and studio access to API services and hit save. So now we're going to import the data store to library. Now this will be linked in the video description, but because I'm in studio, I'm just going to drag it into server storage. I'm going to pop this into server storage, but you can put it in server script service. It's completely up to you. The next thing we want to do is create a boolean value inside of server storage and rename it to save in studio using capital letters for the first letters in the words. Make sure to set that to true. This will allow us to have our data saved in studio. The next thing I'm going to do is create a script inside of server script service and I'm going to call this one player manager. The first thing I'm going to do is require some services so I'm going to speed this up and you can copy and paste it when we're done. All right, now that we've got our services imported, we're also going to want to localize the data store 2 library. So you're just going to require the data store 2 module just like you would any other module script. And now we're going to detect when the player joins the game using the player added method. And now we can get into the fun parts of the tutorial. So now we're going to take advantage of the data store 2 API and localize our inventory store. If you're not familiar with the Data Store 2 API, I recommend checking out the API documentation I listed in the video description. Go take a look at that and come on back. So now we're going to want to create our replicated data folder. This is going to allow the client's data to easily be replicated to the client without the use of remote events. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder inside of replicated storage. I'm just going to call this replicated data. And now I'm going to create the container folder for our player and parent it to that new folder. I'm just going to name it to the player's user ID. Okay, so now we have our container folder, but now we're going to create a string value to represent our inventory. I'm going to name it inventory for now, and now we're going to go on to the next part. Now I'm going to explain how this actual replication system works because it's pretty simple. We're using the principle that you can encode a Lua table into a string value using HTTP service JSON encode and decode. So what we're going to do is initially grab the data from the data store. So to do this, we're going to say local inventory data, and we're going to use the um, inventory store object and the get method, and we're going to pass a blank table as the default value. What this is going to say is, okay, if data store 2 cannot find a value on the Roblox data stores, we're just going to use a blank table as the default value. So once we have that, we're going to actually set the inventory string value to the JSON encoded version of the inventory data. And that's that. So now, if we hop into Roblox Studio, and we check out our replicated data value, we should see a blank pair of brackets. So if we go into our ID, and I have data because I've tested this before, but you should see a set of brackets that look just like that. So now what we want to do is replicate the changes of the inventory to the client. So to do this, we're going to take advantage of data store 2's on update method. So we're going to call the on update method of the inventory store, create a new function, and we're going to use the argument decoded data. So now we're going to actually simply set the string value to the JSON encoded version of the decoded data. This function gets called whenever the value of the inventory is changed and the new value is passed as an argument. So we're going to encode that in JSON and set the value. So now what we want to do is make sure that the replicated data folder is cleaned up when the player leaves. So we're going to bind to the player removing event of the player service. And we're going to first try to find the replicated data folder. So once we have that, we're going to verify that it exists. And if it exists, we're just going to destroy it. We don't have to worry about manually setting the data because Data Store 2 takes care of that for us. So our cleanup is super, super, super simple. This itself isn't going to do anything, so I'm going to implement a basic fruit spawning system to prove that this works. All of this will be in the RBLX file in the description below, but for now, I'm just going to pop it into studio. 
To take a look at how the data is actually updated, we're going to take a look at these lines specifically. So, when the click detector is clicked, we're going to use the player argument, and we're going to get the inventory store, much like we did in the player manager. We're then going to call the update method of the inventory store. And what this is going to do is actually give us the current value of the inventory without having to use the get method. We're then going to detect if the um, item is already part of the inventory, and if it is, we're just going to increment the value by 1, but if it's not, we're just going to set the value to 1, and you have to return the table. This is all on the Data Store 2 API, so again, if you're not familiar, check the link in the video description, become familiar, and come on back. If we actually hop into Studio, we should see that this function actually works properly. So if we check our inventory, I have data here, so I'm going to ignore that. But when we click this, we should not see any errors. And if we actually look at something like my orange, I have 19 oranges, but when I click that, I now have 20 oranges. And when I leave the game and come back, I will still have 20 oranges. And there we go. So I'm going to implement a basic UI to demonstrate this. Again, this will be available in the video description. The script for this is actually extremely simple. I just do some quick localization and I grab the data folder in replicated storage and I'm looking for the inventory string and I'm going to bind a function for whenever that value is updated. I'm going to decode the value of that string, iterate through all of the item names, create a text label and set the label to the amount. So now when we hop into studio, Whenever I click a thing, you will notice that it appears here. And I can keep clicking all of these fruits, and they will be added to my inventory, which wasn't too hard, but the main aspect was saving it. So as you can see, I have one lemon, three pears, and three apples. And when I rejoin, and there we go. So this UI can easily be updated for a visual with viewport frames or images. This is just a very rudimental example of how this can be implemented. Now, the whole RBLX file will be listed in the video description. I know this tutorial was not perfect. This is the first one that I've made, but I hope you advanced scripters understood it and were able to implement this in your game. If you were, make sure to drop a like, comment down below with any questions. We'll make sure to respond to them. Thank you for watching Talkative Entertainment. See ya.